Hello everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. As you can see, I'm in my workshop today because we're going to talk about making custom dials. But first, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure to follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. So I have multiple projects going on right now and this is going to give me the opportunity to show you some of the processes I use to make custom dials. Now there's only about a handful of ways to go about making a dial for a watch. Now if you are starting a micro brand and you're going to do a large production run you can you know, get into the the programs like AutoCAD and, and whatnot design a watch uh, from beginning to end case dial hands and then you source that out to other companies for manufacturing but for someone like me who builds uh, one-off watches for myself and for customers then I've got to have a different process I'm not going to do a large production run and so there are a few ways that I go about making custom dials again for my watches or for potential customers or for me to sell in my store so how do I make custom dials let me show you up close alright so I'm gonna to talk to you about four different ways you could go about creating a custom dial for a watch project the first is to use a dial that was in a previous watch and you can buy one-off dials like that sure on places like eBay that might have the design you want of course a lot of dials from prior watches will have logos or other identifying information like about the movement or the country of origin you can buy these uh, prior dials in bulk usually from again on eBay or from different watch part distributors and you can buy like a bag you know of old watch dials and these can be used for lots of different types of projects. Usually they're used for like steampunk style projects. But sometimes you can get some interesting dials in these. It's random, so you kind of have to get lucky. I kind of like this this one. It's got a very, you know, vintage vibe. The only identifying information on it is that it's Swiss. That's it. Um, so I could put a Swiss movement in that watch. Um, there's an old Elgin pocket watch dial in here that looks, you know, very, you know, nostalgic and interesting. This will probably get reused in a project I'll do, um, either with a really large wristwatch or maybe I'll do a pocket watch at some point. But you can buy these old dials in bulk. And usually what I'll do is if I get uh, one of those bulk packages, the first thing I'll do is I will go through the package and pull out all the ones that have the least damage, that look like they're in the best condition, and set those aside and protect them. And then the others I'll use for doing things like logo testing, and things like that so this is one approach so here I've got one of those dials that came in bulk and it's just a plain gray dial it's got some applied markers on it you can see that it did have a little bit about the prior uh, watch that it was in it's a Japanese movement it's got the serial number there but there wasn't any logo or anything and so I was using this to test this is an early version of one of my logos so I just and testing sizes you know is the hat the right size is the text the right size so now if you want to use a dial from a previous watch in a project you're gonna to have to start with a dial and work your way backward and what I mean by that is usually if I'm doing a watch project I'll, I'll either start with the movement um, or the case and then I figure out the rest from there but in this situation you have a dial you want maybe it's got the design or the look you want well that dial on the reverse is going to have dial feet and that's only going to fit certain movements and so what you've got to do is get the measurements of the dial obviously the diameter and stuff but the center hole and the date window if it has one or other windows depending on what complications uh, the watch has going on and then the dial feet you know relative to those things because this is only going to fit in certain movements all right so let me show you a, a movement so this is a this is a Soleta automatic movement with a small seconds complication, which I'm going to be using in a, in a future project. But you can see that there are holes in locations on the movement. Here's the other one for the dial feet to go into. And then there's usually a screw or a lever that you use to then secure it to the movement. And that's the case with quartz uh, movements and with automatic and hand wound movements. So those dial feet will only fit in certain movements and you, so you've got to figure out well, well if you really like this dial and this design what movements is going to fit and then once you have that then you can you know 
based on the, the diameter of the dial and the movement, then what kind of case will it fit into? So it's got struggles of its own if you use this approach. One is you, you're just really repurposing a prior design. Maybe you add a logo to it or something. Um, it does give you a nice brass or different type of metal alloy dial that's going to be at least reasonable construction and you've got a lot of the work done for you already. You just got to find the movement in the case. But again, those can be struggles of their own. So that's one approach, using a prior watch's dial. Okay, so the second approach would be to purchase a pre-made dial that the manufacturing is already done, it just happens to be a design you like, but you know the sizes and dimensions, the movements it will fit into because it's coming from a distributor and they usually have that information. And so I usually do that via eBay if I'm buying small quantities of dials. And sometimes you can find dials that don't have any identifying information. So like this particular dial, you can purchase with the logo of the company that manufactures them, or you can get it without any logo so you can put yours on it and make it your own. Now, I like th this particular wave pattern. This is gonna go in a series of watches I'm calling a tea party, but the white and the black and the steel markers, I thought this was a nice design, but this is meant to fit specifically an ETA or Unitas uh, 6497 or equivalent movement. I'll use, you know, an ST36, which is an equivalent Chinese-made version of that, that movement. And this is a good way to go about creating a custom project because the distributor is going to have the information about the diameter of the dial so you can pick a correct case. You know what movements it's going to fit into. Hopefully the case you get comes with the movement holder so that you can kind of then piece it together fairly easily. But this is another way that I like to go about it. One, because I'm going, I don't have to do the design work, but I also don't have to spend all the time doing things like applying markers and or uh, getting the, the text or other things printed on the dial. And some of that you're not going to be able to do without having the manufacturing capability anyway, but you know, this is, this is a good approach to go if you can find a design you like. The key is, can you find a design you like that doesn't have any identifying information. So, you know, there's no, you know, Swiss made or, uh, you know, Japanese movement or logo information, kind of like what was on this older dial with saying what movement it was from. So that's another approach you can use. All right, so approach number three, let's say you want to do a 100% custom dial. You don't want to use something that was in a prior watch that you've put your logo on. You can't find anything on eBay that has the design aesthetic you're looking for. How do you go about making a 100% custom dial? Well, a couple approaches to that. One is you've got to have the material. You still have to have the actual dial that's the right size, the right diameter for the case the dial feet in the right locations for the movement. If it's got other complications like a date complication, it's gotta have the windows cut into it. You've gotta have the actual dial. A couple ways you can do that is, one, you can buy dial blanks if you can find them, but it's hard to find dial blanks for a lot of movements. Here's an example, I do have some. These are for solida movements, but they're just a plain blank dial. You can see there's no date window, so this is just a regular old plain three-hand watch dial. It's got the dial feet on it, but it's the material, you know, it's brass, and it's just a white primer on top. I could print something on it. I could apply markers to it, loom, etc. But it's hard to find blanks, pre-made blanks, that fit the exact movement or the size you want for the case you want. So sometimes what you've got to do is find a dial that's done, like I have here. It's already printed. I could put this on the movement I have for the GMT project. I could put it in the case, put the hands on it, and it's done. But I want a custom, custom look. I want a custom dial. But it's going to be cheaper for me to buy a dial like this. It's already done, and then to repurpose it than it would be to purchase a production run of blanks for a certain movement, and then I've got a bunch of parts I don't need. Sure, I could go turn around and try to resell those, and I'm sure they would sell, but in terms of time and energy, 
it's cheaper for me just to buy a done dial and then to repurpose it. Well, how do I go about repurposing it? Here I've made a, I've got just a two by four. And what I've done is I've drilled a couple of holes for where the dial feet go. Now the way I actually go about making those holes is I will just use the tip of a, the tip of a nail and I'll just hammer just a little bit just to get the hole started. And then I actually use uh, a cheap spring bar tool because on the spring bar tool, this little pin is just about the exact same size as dial feet on the back of a dial. And I'll work, work this down in there with just pressure and I'll, you know, I'll dig it out a little bit and get the holes in the right locations for the dial feet. And then I've taken, again, a small nail. This is just a trim nail, actually a regular old two inch trim nail. It goes in like baseboards. And this happens to be the exact same size as the center hole on this dial. And so what I did to this board was I, I nailed the nail down into it and then I used a hacksaw and cut it off nice and smooth, nice and even, sanded it down a little bit on top, but this is sticking out just enough that it has pressure. And you can kind of hear it snap down in there, but this is not gonna move. The dial feet are in the drilled holes and this nail is, and this is flush. What I've done is I've got this at just the right height and I've sanded that off so it's flush. And now what I can do is I can take a hand sander and I'm gonna sand off all of this existing detail on this face and get it down to the bare metal or just about to the bare metal where, where it's smooth. I'll reapply primer and then it's ready for printing or for marker application or so on and so forth. So that's another approach. If you can't find a dial blank that's ready for printing or marker application, sometimes I'll take a dial that's meant to go with a specific movement and case size and take that done dial, sand this off, and repurpose it um, for the design I want. So that's approach number three. Approach number four that I'm using for my custom projects. Now, that GMT project I just spoke about, I've got a couple of those metal dials that I can sand off, reprime, and Re have reprinted with the, my custom design, 100% custom design. I'm using those because they're metal, but I'm also testing with 3D printing. So these are samples that I've got in front of you from my 3D printer. So I have, I have a 3D printer, which wasn't, you know, crazy expensive. And I use AutoCAD. I design the custom dials and print them. And these are at different stages of testing. So what, I've, what I'm doing right now for that project is I don't know if I'm gonna use the metal dial for the GMT or if I'm gonna use one of these 3D printed dials. Depends on what kind of look the customer is gonna want. So these, you can see the detail of the 3D printing, which can create a nice custom look in and of itself, but this is raw currently. Uh, you can see I've got, this is, what is this? This is gonna be print test three. So you can see it's got the dial feet printed on it. So that's all, you know, I've designed it and printed it myself with my own 3D printer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print with my pad printer or with UV printing directly on the surface of this 3D printed dial. And of course the feet are in the right locations, the center hole's the right size for the, the pinions to go through and then the date window is hopefully cut in the right spot for the movement. So, you know, sometimes I'll sand these down does the customer want to see the lines in the lines in them? And then these two here are also 3D printed, but you can see this looks a little bit more like that dial blank I showed earlier. So here is here's one of those dial blanks, which of course is just brass manufactured in, in China. It's got dial feet on it, and then it's got this primer on top, which is ready for printing. My custom design. Well, this is the same sort of idea, but this is actually 3D printed. So you can see the back looks the same, and this doesn't matter too much. I'll sand this off a little bit, but I got my dial feet and whatnot, but you can tell this has been 3D printed because of the lines. And what I've been doing is going through a series of 
primer applications and sanding to see at what point do I want to to stop? What point does it have sort of that custom? It still looks, you can tell it's 3D printed, almost looks like a, a matte enamel almost, but filling in like little holes and gaps with a primer, but it's a process. It's, it's an intensive work process, but when I'm done, these will potentially be used in watch projects. And I'm not, you know, 3D printing is relatively new. What's the, what's the duration of this inside of a watch? I don't see why it wouldn't last a long time. Um, as long as the printing and it's got UV coating and all those sort of things, it should last just as long as um, about anything else you put inside of the case. So this is an interesting approach I'm using as well. You can see that there are lines from, from the sanding and whatnot. This one has been sanded and then another coat, sanded and another coat, sanded and another coat. Um, trying to get down to the finish and the smoothness I want. This one has had no sanding, so it's just had primer applied to it and that's it in multiple coats and eventually this will become smooth. These are just in different stages of production. Um, but it's a process that I'm going through to create my own dials. So it's just a fourth way that I'm using that I'm sharing with you. That is, if you had the means or access to you know, design software, 3D printer, you could go about designing and creating your own dial. And the key here is to get the size and the dimensions you want for the case, for the movement, for the complications that you've got in the watch. And then you can print or put whatever information on these, on these dials that you want. So that's a little bit about my approaches to custom dial making. Sometimes I'll find an old dial from a previous watch that I can repurpose and it can live another life. Sometimes I'm able to find a design I like online and I can apply my logo to it and it works well with the hands and the case and strap to create an overall design that I really like. Sometimes I have to work with a dial that's already done and I sand it off, I reprime it, and then it's ready for printing or for marker application. Sometimes I have to design and 3D print for a really truly custom project that I might be working on. So maybe if you're interested in trying your hand at making a watch or trying to make a custom dial, this will get you started down any of these particular roads. At least show you what are some of the possibilities might be for creating a custom dial. So I'm Brian at Watch Complications. Hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications.